This is the KQI3 Pro, the top of the line scooter for one of the hottest new brands of electric scooters. It's made by New, a company that put 3 million of these on the road before building their first kick scooters. So build quality feels vehicle grade because, well, they know how to build vehicles. Incidentally, they're the only scooter company we know of that's listed on NASDAQ. Now, we're not the first to review the KQI3 Pro, but we are the first ones with hands-on test data to compare every performance metric against identical tests for the 9 by Max, the KQI2 Pro, and a few other scooters. In the US, New sells two versions, the KQI3 Pro and KQI3 Sport. We're reviewing the Pro version, which has a bigger battery, more power, dual disc brakes, and costs $100 more than the KQI3 Sport. Our KQI3 Pro is rose gold, but it also comes in ultra black. Check out the link in the description and coupon code for the best price. The other kick scooter new sells in the US is the KQI2 Pro, which we reviewed back in April. Confusingly, the KQI2 Pro has the same power, same battery size, and same top speed as the lower model KQI3 Sport, but costs less and has 10 inch tires. So we're gonna focus on the two we think are the best value, the KQI3 Pro and KQI2 Pro, both of which are great commuters. All of new scooters have a very long warranty. So they're basically saying, hey, you may not know our brand yet, so here's a huge warranty to prove that we make good stuff. All of the most expensive parts, including the battery, motor controller, and dash are covered for 24 months. The ESG certified top speed of the KQI3 Pro is a very satisfying 18.6 miles per hour, which beat the 9Bot Max and the KQI2 Pro and comes in just behind the Apollo Air Pro. The indicated speed was 20 miles per hour, but just like cars, almost all scooter speedometers read 5 to 10% high. This gave me enough speed to confidently pass bicycles. On the ESG range test circuit, the KQI3 Pro covered 20.9 miles in top performance mode, running basically full throttle the whole time other than stopping for red lights or stop signs. That's about 25% further than the KQI2 Pro and 20% further than the Apollo Air Pro. But this is one metric where the KQI3 Pro comes up short of the 9Bot Max. The KQI3 Pro maintained 90% of full speed right up until the last two miles of the range test. Then it slowed noticeably right as the last bar on the battery meter started blinking. There's no mistaking that the end is coming because one mile later, the dash turned bright red, displayed a warning code and started beeping, but it still let me go one more mile before coming to a stop. If range is what you're after, rumor has it that the US market will soon get a KQI3 Max version that has an even bigger battery than the big 9Bot Max G30. The throttle comes on very smoothly no matter what riding mode you're using, so we were surprised when the KQI3 Pro's 0-15 to time beat everything in its price class, coming in 46% quicker from 0-15 to than the KQI2 Pro and edging out the 9Bot Max by 2 tenths of a second. It's also a great hill climber. On our steep 10% grade test hill, the KQI3 Pro was 27% faster than the KQI2 Pro and tied the 9Bot Max. Braking is truly outstanding. Of the 100 scooters we've tested, the KQI3 Pro is the first scooter under $1,000 that comes with disc brakes front and rear. So it was no surprise when it beat absolutely every one of its peers, stopping from 15 miles per hour in just 10 feet. The brakes themselves are very unusual. Most mechanical disc brakes only press from one side, but these calipers squeeze from both sides like a hydraulic brake. So it takes less hand strength to do a hard stop. I'm just gonna geek out about these brakes for a minute. It also uses an extremely rare kind of regenerative braking. Typical regen brakes use the on-off switch for the brake light to turn the regen brakes fully on or fully off. But the KQI3 has a variable sensor in the brake lever that gives you variable amounts of regen depending on how hard you pull the lever. Here's regen off, here's the minimum, and here's the maximum. The regen brakes on the KQI3 Pro give you outstanding braking control of the rear tire, even if you're only using the front brake lever. The frame and stem on the KQI3 Pro feel ultra solid, just like the 9 Watt Max, which means on the very roughest pavement, the grips can get a little buzzy. But most of the time, the 9.5 inch diameter air-filled tubeless tires do a great job of smoothing out the ride and have the bonus of being much more flat resistant than tires with tubes. When it comes to handling, the KQI3 Pro has two big advantages. 
handlebars that are almost three inches wider than the 9Bot Max, and a 15 degree steering angle that gives it extra stability in straight lines and in corners. The KQI2 and KQI3 Pro are rear wheel drive, which further improves road feel, especially if you like to wheelie off of curbs. The KQI3 Pro doesn't have a zero start function since new didn't want new riders to get caught off guard. However, the way the kick to start engages can take a little getting used to. It doesn't let you throttle first and then kick. Just like the 9Bot Max, you have to kick first and then throttle. It's the kind of thing you probably get used to pretty quick, but it's annoying when you get it wrong. When we say this is the Mercedes-Benz of scooters, of course, we're talking about build quality. The way it's packaged is a good example. I mean, look at all the little plastic covers. They're pretty much everywhere. The KQI3 Pro has a water resistance rating of IP54 and excellent fender protection. They even go as far as specifying how much water you can ride it through. Keep in mind that scooter companies generally don't cover water damage under warranty though. The overall design is intentionally minimalist, which keeps things easy to use. The display is readable even in bright sunlight, but if it ever seems hard to read, make sure the headlight's off. Turning off the headlight brightens the display, but leaves the halo light on for visibility. One long click turns the scooter on, one short click changes speed modes, two clicks toggles the headlight on or off, three clicks changes the display from miles to kilometers, and five clicks drops the scooter into walk mode. When you first get the scooter, there are a couple quirks you need to know about. Because it's shipped with the battery in transportation mode, when you first pull it out of the box, you have to plug it in for a minute or the scooter won't turn on at all. Then there's the app. To get the scooter out of eco mode, you need to download the app and go through a short tutorial. The tutorial is smart enough to know if you're doing what it asks you to do. For example, when it asked me to grab the front brake and I grabbed the rear brake instead, it wouldn't move on until I got it right. Once you're through the tutorial, to unlock top speed, you'll still need to cover 500 meters riding in eco mode with the app open. If it's your first ride, starting out at nine miles per hour is probably a good idea. Once you're all set, you don't need to use the app anymore unless you want to toggle cruise control on or off, set a custom maximum speed, check ride history, turn on energy recovery, or update the firmware. I love the super quick stem latch. It's bigger than the one I sort of gushed about on the KQI2 Pro review, but just as nice to use. The deck latch, on the other hand, is even better than the KQI2 and way easier to latch and unlatch than the 9Bot Max. With an ESG certified weight of 45 pounds, it's not light, but the stem is comfortable to hold, making it easy for most people to carry up one to three flights of stairs or put in the trunk. The KQI3 Pro gets excellent marks for safety with the shortest stopping distance in its class, excellent visibility day or night, and a throttle that's easy for anyone to use. Not having zero start technically makes it safer too, but we wish turning on zero start was an option even if the app made us accumulate 10 or 20 miles first. Pros include, excellent brakes, faster than its peers, and outstanding build quality. Cons include app setup is a little bit long and kick to start takes some getting used to. While you're doing your research, here are some scooters with similar price and performance. 9Bot Max, longer range, but more expensive and a little slower. Apollo Air Pro, best cornering due to front suspension, but a slower hill climber. KQI2 Pro, shorter range and a little slower, but less expensive and a slightly smoother ride. After testing both the KQI3 Pro and KQI2 Pro, I'm starting to get a feel for new as a brand. The ride quality and performance of both scooters are a little better than most for the price, but to be honest, not hugely different. What is different is they have unusually good build quality and a warranty that's twice the industry standard. It's their previous manufacturing experience on the big scooters that made this possible. Normally, I'd say they're taking a big chance by putting a two-year warranty on their very first kick scooters, but with six billion vehicle miles covered, by their Vespa style scooters, they probably know what they're doing. If you'd like to help support our channel, please remember to like and subscribe. As of today, a sale went live on Walmart for $150 off the KQI3. Head to the link in the description to take advantage of that while it lasts. Or you can use the link in the description for $150 off on Amazon and to automatically receive price protection in case the KQI3 is sold for cheaper on Prime Day. Click the link below to see our review of the KQI2 Pro, or click this link to see another of our favorite commuters.